Hello everybody and welcome to What's the Quack. I'm your host Ducky and joining me today is a very special guest, special both mentally and uh, <laughs> in terms of appearance. Connie, how are you doing Connie? Fine, how are you? I'm not too bad now, long time no see. It's, it's been about four minutes since I've seen you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you, you, you had information to share with me there before we started the podcast, but you wanted to hold off. What is it? Yeah. So, you know the Tesco app? Hmm. I just clicked into it to see what offers and stuff were on. And they've done a, like, 2023 un, unpacked, not unwrapped, unpacked, hmm. right? And it was like, see how you shopped and saved and whatever. So, I looked at it out of curiosity. And last year... <laughs> We bought 27 tubs of barbecue Pringles. <laughs> oh, hold on now. I don't like this we you're throwing in there. There's no, there's no we about that. 27. 27. 27. Last year. Yeah. I feel like that should be more. It probably is more. Like, so we got with the amount of Pringles we got in Centra and stuff. Yeah. So. But 27 tubs. You'd think they'd throw in a free one. No. You know, for every 27 tub of Pringles you buy. <laughs> That's a near 15 tubs each, like. We were having Pringles the other night and you had Pringles left over the following morning. I was absolutely shocked. I know, that's because I ate them on Monday. I'm surprised you don't, like, just take out the whole lot of them in one go and just jam them down. <laughs> <laughs> no, I savoured some for Monday. I shouldn't have, but I did. So why did I tell you this information? I don't know. I. You wonder if Little is going to do it now because the both of us are on diet, so it'll be like, this week you bought 27 chicken breasts. Maybe so. I don't know. It's like Spotify does the whole unwrap thing. and. I wonder could they see it if they looked it up and it's just like loads of chicken breasts and steamed veg and all this kind of stuff. And then at the end of the month, it's like five litres of vodka. You know, like, <laughs> they, they didn't quite make it. <laughs> well, it was a hard month, let's be fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got through it. I have that on the list of things we're talking about because the two of us are dieting now proper. I'm not sure it's shit. Because, like, we're like, we're like me care outside, like, you know, stopping and starting for the longest while. Like, I know, but you, sure, look, it's... And when you, you know, when you when you try to get it up and go on, it, it didn't do it with any level of confidence. <laughs> no, but we did this year. We started off yeah. properly. Um, It's still shit. Hmm. But it has to be done. I'm sure you're down half a stone, something like that. Seven, seven and a half pounds, I think. Mm, yeah. And so I'm, what, a stone down. So we're doing pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And tomorrow's first February, so we're not too bad. Like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you going to give me chocolates for Valentine's Day? No. Why not? We can get takeaway. I got you flowers the last two Valentine's Days, and we don't even believe in Valentine's Day. I know. We we see it for the bullshit that it is, but yeah. I did it anyway to be nice. <laughs> and you never once got me not so much a single fucking rose, a teddy bear, nothing. I did. I bought you a teddy bear. It's up there. Oh, is that the cactus? I know. Yeah. I forgot it. <laughs> I'll get you another one what's if you the say, want. What's the say in the front of it? You prickle my fancy. Prick, prickle my fancy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That, you got me a duck as well. There's an old Valentine's duck up there from a few years ago. Yeah. It's a rubber duck, but it's red with white hearts on it. Yeah. <laughs> They're just funny little things. i get you a new teddy this year if you want. I told yeah. you all about them. Well, I love, I do love teddy bears. I'm yeah. a very sentimental creature, yeah. That's Don't get me anything practical that I could use in my day-to-day yeah. that would no. be really handy. No. no, get me something that I have absolutely no use for <laughs> for the rest of my life. It just takes up shelf space because I can't throw it away because that'd be rude. No, I would just get <laughs> takeaway or something this year and that weekend because that's technically our next cheat weekend as well. So. Takeaway. How did you know? I know. <laughs> you always or we can go want. for dinner if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I would ask, I seen a video earlier on today and it was this fella driving behind a Krispy, Krispy Kreme truck. Excellent. And he, and uh, <laughs> clearly a black lad has that pure black uh, speech pattern to him and he's just like, a, he's like, Lord, if you love me, flip this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, I was like that's, that's Connie right there. Yeah, I'd be hanging on to the side of it there. It is Krispy Kremes you go mad for, isn't it? Any kind of a donut. Yeah, but it's particularly Krispy Kremes because there's like one in Ireland. There's one in Ireland, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah but like, I can't I can't remember what was nicer when we were... No, the voodoo ones were nicer. Yeah, when we were in Florida, we tried every donut. And there was like this... It was I think it was called voodoo donut we're, we're in place. America. Was this somebody probably pint down the comments? Oh, in Florida. Florida. In um, Universal was that place in the... Is it City Walk, it's called? When you go into the park, there's just this big walk before you get to the 
parks mm. and they have like tattoo shops and um, food places, stalls, you know, all that kind of crack. And we seen this voodoo place and like they actually had a donut in the shape of a voodoo doll. They were pretty good now, them ones. What, like a gingerbread man donut, essentially? Essentially, yeah, but like it was filled with stuff and like there was like pins. It looked like pins and stuff in oh, it. Oh, it was like icing pins and everything. Yeah, kind of yeah. Oh, yeah uh, cool. They were pretty good. But yeah, then then Krispy Kreme and then Dunkin' Donuts. I'm sure there was probably others, but I just... Well, Krispy Kreme have that like uh, conveyor belt where you can actually see the donuts being glazed. Oh, I don't know. I didn't see that. I think the one we oh, went, we to, went to the Oh, we went to the Dunkin' Donuts drive through that was pretty good. <laughs> only in America. A donut, so yeah, that. I was just going to say only in America because like a donut. I've never sat around and went, Jesus, I'm starving. Get me a donut there, will you? Yeah. Like, yeah. no, it's like, especially that's why you like, don't, don't get that in a drive through Oh, but you do, though. So it was great. Like certain things I'd understand, like coffees in a drive through and stuff like mm. that, you know, because you're on the go. But nobody's just, nobody's that down bad for a donut. Like, you know? Well, look, at it. it's just a blessing I don't live over there because... I won't fit through the door of the house. Like. Yeah, yeah, no, you'd be, but uh, the other side of it, then you'd ha- you'd be about six or seven stone heavier before you'd kind of go. Ah, Jason, you need to lose a bit of weight because, like, you know, there are a bigger population over there. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I'd love every minute of it. I'd say now you with your your fattest. If you went over there, they'd be like, Jesus, look at the body of me one there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although that being said, there's um. I think there's a big difference between the Americans that they ship over here as tourists and the ones they hang on to over there. I think the, the Americans that come over like uh, to Europe uh, doing tours and all that, the vast majority of them are like the defective ones. So, you know, the broken ones are like Asher. They throw them in the bin otherwise. So they're like, ship them over to Europe. What do you mean? Around. The real and iron ones? But they're just big and fat. like. Oh. And they, they hang on to the good looking ones because anything you ever see like reality TV showing like Miami Beach and all that, it's all these fucking oh, yeah. fine looking people. Like, you know, it's yeah, but I unreal. think Miami. They have a gym on a beach over there where it's just nothing but just topless men and women just I know, going yeah. hard at it. Yeah. For all day, apparently. They, they never heard of like, you know, anything over 40 minutes is a waste of time. No, yeah. they're there for hours. Yeah, that's because you're in Miami. Like, you have to. And then, then you got the. <laughs> The, the lumps that come over here then. The lumps. The lumps, yeah. That's how you years ago, um, we were like going down to town on a trip and, um, you know, walking around. I don't know, there was some stupid assignment the teacher gave us to get out of class, like, count mm-hmm. how many bins are in the town or something stupid. But we were standing <laughs> at the foot of the Rock of Cashel. Yeah. So oh, for yeah. people who are listening now, the Rock of Cashel is this castle on a hill, essentially. Massive thing. And we were standing at the end of the road that leads directly to it. Like, and it's not that far away. It's maybe... I don't know, 300 meters yeah. from where we were standing. And it's, it's like a big American family just comes up comes up to us and says, excuse me, could you tell me where the Rock of Cashel is? And like, Jesus, lad, look around. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, take an educated guess. It's a fairly flat town. It's fairly well signposted. There's, there's, not, a, there's not a spot in Cashel where you can't you can spot can't the Rock of Cashel. It, yeah. Yeah. It'd be like walking, walking around the center of Paris asking people, where's the Eiffel Tower? Where's the Eiffel Tower? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, they're big enough, like. Mm. A friend of mine, John, who convinced Americans that leprechauns were real. Yeah, well, sure, they would. Some of them would believe that, let's mm. be fair about it. Oh, he put the shits up them, though, because he was like, oh, yeah, though. He was like, you don't go out to the country, though, because you come across a leprechaun, they'll tear your fucking face off. <laughs> they're feral, like. They're, they're pests over here. <laughs> there's like, actually, what? there's the, the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them book that I finished last night. There's... Because they go through the alphabet of all the fantastic beasts and mythical creatures and all that. Leprechaun is in it. Mm. Like, why? Well, I think they just pulled all that from actual myth and stuff like so, like Pegasus and I know, you yeah. know all the kind of mythical creatures that already existed. That's why you'd often find some a lot of similarities between like Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter. There'll be like beasts and what have you that are very similar to it. Well, speaking of which, we're playing Lego Lord of the Rings lately, aren't we? Yes, yeah. Yeah, you're very much enjoying I that. I love it. <laughs> I feel like you're sitting below in the sitting room just kind of going, I wonder if I go down and ask him, can we... Well, can we play some more? Play some more, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a sweet toot. You just want to pull your toot out and you're like, I really want to play it. <laughs> yeah, and it's typical because you wanted me to play that game, was it Overcooked? Yeah. And um, we, we played a bit of that and then I was just like looking up what are other good co-op games because we played that uh, It Takes Two and we had a bit of crack that, that. was good yeah, yeah It Takes Two was very good and uh, so I looked it up and it's like Lego games and it's like oh she's gone big into to building Legos Lego. lately which we can touch on if you want <laughs> but um, I was like she's gone big into Lego so I'll, I'll see if she'll have a go at that and you, you were reserved you were coming at me going I don't know now yeah because I don't know I just always had this thing that they were shit but they're not 
Yeah, it's probably one of them things where you enjoy it if you're into it, that kind of thing. Yeah. So we threw it on there now, that, and, the, and the hook is in. Just crack cocaine to her. She can't come yeah, away from it. Yeah, it's excellent. <laughs> it's so much fun. And yeah. now I'm like, what are the ones out there? <laughs> There's all of the ones. Well, how, how far are we into it? Like 15, 16 percent? Something yeah, but stupid I don't, like that? I don't know if that percentage is the story completion or is it oh. the, all the collectibles and everything else. Oh, right. Because there's some games where like you literally pass the main story and you're only like 35 uh, yeah. percent through the game or something like that. Okay. Yeah, so I'm guessing it's all the collectibles is measuring as well. Yeah. Um, otherwise... It's actually a really long game, if that's the case. Well, I, well, it's obviously the three films in one. Like mm. they're fucking three hours long each. Well, we've put about six hours into it already. Like, and it's if not coming more, up like sixteen yeah. percent. So yeah, but um, but yeah, we might do that on a on a stream one of the nights. Vomit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you, you're only cacking yourself because uh, you're a flaming racist. And no, I'm not. Flaming racist, and you know that I spend a better t- part of my time editing. But just why I don't have you on podcast. Because it takes me several days just to edit out all the racial slurs <laughs> and and half baked tangents about foreigners and trans. You just go mad, go off off the deep end there. Just like living with Donald Trump. It is. <laughs> I'm not racist. I'm not racist. <laughs> well, I just end up calling myself a handicap, but well, call my character <laughs> a handicap and. Those lovely words that you're not supposed to use because they're now politically incorrect. Mm. <laughs> they're the words you can say in Ireland, but you can't really say outside of Ireland. And that's the problem with the internet is like, it's so many shared cultures that like, you know, yeah, one, one word that doesn't sound harsh to us at all would sound like the worst word in the world to somebody other, somebody else's yeah. culture. Yeah, your your fascination with Lego. Yeah. She, she got I don't it. even know how that started. You got the Lego up house. Yeah, but why did I buy that? I why did know. I have Why do you such? do anything? Oh, I know what it was. I know what it was. What? It was, like, and I can't think of her name, but it's the girl that I follow on TikTok. And she builds all the Legos. And I was like, oh, they look really fun. So I was like, oh, sure, I'll just get a small set. And then well, it's, it's the thing is about building a Lego house. It's the closest thing our generation will come we'll to actually owning a house. Own a house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here, look, it costs more or less the same to buy a it fucking really does, Lego. Yeah, the price, price of Lego. You would, you'd want to take out a mortgage on yeah, it. Where yeah. are they going? Some plastic bricks, like. <laughs> what kind of, they're like the iPhone of plastic blocks as well. Yeah. It's just this overinflated price because we're the brand name. Therefore, we should charge more. Sorry. Um, but your iPhone, the loophole. I found the loophole. Yeah, he found the holy grail. <laughs> so so we do, for, for the listener there, we do this thing every year. So Christmas time, we have a budget, which I think every couple out there should have a budget mm-hmm. a limit we say uh, what we can spend on each other because otherwise it just gets out of hand and then it just becomes a competition which I've seen with loads of couples around yeah. so we just set a hard limit that we both always break but, <laughs> but we only break it by a small amount it's not to take the mickey with it yeah so uh, it was this year she wanted uh, 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 an Ellie and Joe thing <laughs> Ella and Joe splitting the difference here now <laughs> um, gift card because uh, face groups. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the face group. Your mother's not a bad looking woman. So if you don't look better than her when you get to her age, I'm going to kick the door down of Ellie and Joe's. I have another 20 years. I'm to going to get them to refund okay. every single, <laughs> single cream they ever sold you. <laughs> I have another 20 years to get I'll go in, I'll go in holding your armory, but look at the state of her fucking face. <laughs> you tell me your creams work. Look at her face and tell me her creams work. She's in bits. You have to mind your skin. <laughs> She's a face like a bag of spanners. But um, yeah. Maybe that's so, why I throw them at you all the time. Yeah, yeah. I was actually on that note for people listening. There was um, the, the latest video I dropped about the wanket. There was a scene on that day where I'm like taking the mickey out of Connie, basically saying that uh, where I cleaned the house and there was no thanks for it and all that real tongue and cheek thing about how she's always cleaned the house and I never thank her for it. Which does happen. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Uh, but sure. Anyway, and <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it it's just I don't hold it to the same high value like build a shelf go out and fix my car then I'll go wow babe that was class no. but no hoovering the floor I'm just like ah oh, sure I don't care about that but um, yeah so we did, did that scene but it didn't have the the spanner throwing scene in it and like the patrons out there know that uh, that scene actually didn't exist in the patron version and it was only when I was showing Connie the finished video there she goes I should have hit you in his head with a spanner right there <laughs> <laughs> and I was like oh that's, that's a good idea <laughs> so uh, I added it in so that's that's a Connie touch there <laughs> doing yeah. the callbacks you missed Mark hmm. yeah. but uh, what was I was saying back into Christmas presenting mm-hmm. so yeah I got you that, I got you that uh, so our limit is the 100 quid that's what we do 100 quid yeah. with each other so I got her a 100 quid uh, voucher for her 
face creams or fucking horoscopes for the profit <laughs> market. And uh, I got her that. So we, and so we, she, she started this trend of just getting her, getting us small gifts to go along with it. Yeah, her. surprise. I was perfectly content. I said, we set the 100 quid and then you immediately broke it. But uh, and uh, you're, you're a repeat offender every year to the point where I can rely on you to break it. So now I have to get a small yeah, extra one. Yeah, but I always get you a surprise because you know what your main thing is. It's not a surprise when I know you're going to get me something next But you don't know what it is. Yeah, well. Three. It's still a surprise. You don't know what it is. Knowing what it is. That, like the surprise is only a recent thing because we're together so long. We're just like, let's not just beat around the bush. Neither one of us know what to get each other. Just tell <laughs> yeah. each other what we want and then we can live this happy, peaceful life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then you're getting something you know you want, you know? Yeah. So I was like, right, I need a, I need a surprise to get her. And I was like, right, she's, she's really into Legos. But I couldn't buy a single Lego brick for like, you know, a Say I go about it was like about twenty percent of mm. hundred quid, about twenty quid's worth. A small little surprise gift. I couldn't buy a single Lego brick for that. So I went <laughs> no, slu- not one single I, brick. I went sleuthing online and I came across this uh, this web page called was it Yumco? Yumco, yeah. yeah. And they sell basically Chinese knockoffs of like Lego Legos. bricks. Yeah, and uh, just you thought, wouldn't know the difference. No, you wouldn't know the difference. And a lot of them were there were like reprints of like discontinued Lego stuff and sure enough I came across that friend Central Park one yeah so I was just like ah it's just a small surprise present so if it's missing a couple of bricks or something like that no harm done it's only a small mm. yoke anyway so I ordered that and uh, it worked like a jam you were missing one piece from one it one piece and it wasn't even detrimental to the yeah. thing you wouldn't even know what was supposed to be there yeah, was, you wouldn't even know what was a plastic missing. grill on top of a cooker or yeah something like the grate for underneath the coffee machine like. yeah yeah so but yeah, it worked, worked like a charm. And now you've been hooked on the website because the, the, her limiting factor for building Legos was the sheer gargantuan, frightening cost of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's shocking. <laughs> it's just cutting it. Like, the only reason I bought the up house is, one, it was one of the cheapest sets, and two, it was on offer when I bought it. So I think, what was it, like 55 euro? And I got it, like, under 50, I think. Mm. Was it 45, something like that? Mm. And I was like, yeah, that's good. And then you showed me that site and I realised I could have bought it for 15 fucking euro. But however, it's done now. The damage is done. <laughs> yeah, I felt like a land taking Jasmine on the carpet there. Yeah. I was like, I can show you the world when I showed you that website. <laughs> like the set that I got, the Hedwig one, the Harry Potter collector's edition is 300 euro from Lego. Yeah. And what did I get for, including shipping, 62 euro or something, something like that? that? Yeah, like there's a massive disgusting, difference. Disgusting, disgusting difference. And, and again, there was one piece missing, mm. but you wouldn't even know it was missing. Like, I know what's missing, but you wouldn't know. It's yeah, missing. yeah. You're, the, the thing you're losing out on is you're not getting the kind of Lego guarantee of every mm. single piece being there, but you're also saving 90% of yeah. the cost. So, yeah. you know, what's... Well, you're still coming out better in my 100%, opinion. 100%, yeah. But the th- thing about that is, I, I was telling you this already, but after uh, finding that website and all that, I ended up going down a rabbit hole about Lego. Curious of how many, how these websites kind of stay up when, like, you know, they're clearly kind of infringing on Lego's kind of stuff and what have you. Yeah. And obviously the main answer is a lot of it's in China, it are these companies based out of China and you just, next to impossible to try to take them down because yeah. of two different countries' laws. Another thing I discovered along the way is Lego itself is a knockoff of another brick from like pre nineteen twenties. Um, Lego wasn't the original inventor of the the, the brick. Oh. I, I forget the name, but like they actually so they stole it and they, then are making a stupid profit on well, it. Well, essentially, yeah. But the thing with Lego bricks, they're kind of so generic. Yeah, that, that, that they never stole it because they never owned it to begin with. You know that kind of way. It were just building blocks. But yeah, there was another toy company who made these, but they had no focus on them. They just had small little kind of educational toys made of their their bricks. And that was. And then Lego went. Yeah. Lego whoever was in charge of Lego seen the opportunity and went, oh, let's make our entire company about that and build out from there. And yeah, but let's be fair, they were clever. Yeah, but like they they did invent or they did change and tweak the brick along the years to make them clip better, better together and stuff like that. Yeah. But there were small iterations on the one big idea so yeah the, like Lego has been the best. but the thing is like the price of Lego as we've discussed is absolutely frightening ridiculous but like they're plastic bricks that they're, haven't yeah, changed yeah. The, the only much difference in the way of anything in the last 60 to 70 years like yeah like the only difference is they don't have Lego printed on the brick who yeah. cares who's going, going to be inspecting it with a fine tooth comb no, 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 like. nobody cares Yeah, but sure like we're part of the Irish culture there as well the one advantage an Irish culture has over at least a lot of other cultures I know is 
we, pennies. We, yeah, pe- <laughs> well, pennies. Yeah, that's that's exactly the good the idea I'm going for. We love a cheap thing. Yeah. We, we boast about how cheap th- we got rather like, than how expensive pennies, it is. Thanks, pennies. Mm. It's like some, if somebody got like a lovely, like pennies would be the one, you got a lovely pair of trousers there, you'd be like, geez, those pe- trousers are lovely. Where'd you get them? There's more clout in saying I got them pure cheap, cheap. from pennies than then, there would be yeah. saying I got them out of Armani. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? But then that Sheen, Shine, I don't know, is it Sheen, I think? that it's Sheen, yeah. Yeah, so. that's the up and coming one. Thanks, Sheen. <laughs> like, it's, the only difference is it's online and you're buying shit, like, but. Yeah. Well, you see, one thing I hoped with the whole online thing and like if EMP or any of them websites have taught me that and is that it's not going to happen is I thought when everything would move online, sizes would get more uniform. So you can't just, you know, you can't own five different pairs of pants with five different sizes that all fit you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But no, because these people don't know what 38 inches is or I just don't whatever. understand it how is it different <laughs> how is it different it doesn't make on pants that are not one bit elastic elasticated that can stretch full stop they're one measurement and they still fuck it and up they're still like, different yeah i know now you well, like but they're probably this is why like i go in from china <laughs> probably but this is why i get a fucking complex when i go into pennies and i'm like no i'm a size 12 or whatever and then i go into the changing room with a size 14 knowing full well that size 12 won't fit me and like i can't even get to size 14 up past me thighs like mm. like that's that's why pe- women get a complex <laughs> well, you know? you could, like it's easier to be a man in this regard because we can just go into a shop pick up a pair of trousers and say right I'm 34 waist mm. these say a 34 and then we take them home and if they don't fit they go in the bottom of the wardrobe and we hope we get skinny one day <laughs> so you can fit into them yeah it's just that we just move on like <laughs> <laughs> no we take <laughs> because it because we'd heart. rather we'd rather die than walk into a changing rooms but sure it's like the set the, the three pack of bras that I bought mm. do you think I could close them wasn't there one of them that kind of fit you and then the other two didn't no no or did it? I, I think, can't remember. I think one of them you could you could just about close. You could shoehorn it. it onto you, yeah. No, I just give up. <laughs> I just give up. I just want like. to do that as a party trick. Just put on like a bra that's one size too small, just so when you stretch it, like breaks for a laugh. Just. <laughs> 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 I don't the, even think. I don't even think you'd be able to do that, no matter how tight it was. What are we talking about here? Bras. Oh. My mind went elsewhere there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I've often wondered, I've often thought of how funny would it be to just, you know, when I'm doing me like shop of mm-hmm. a week there, just to get like a, a ball of socks and shove them down in front of my pants and throw on a pair of sweatpants. <laughs> just to see if people around me react. They probably, well, they'd probably look at you, maybe. I don't know. It's, it's why I got my, my pooter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got this little thing you can squeeze in your hand that makes fart noises and I'm, I, I, I want to take it out in public. I haven't had a good opportunity to do it yet. I did it once in the shop a little. But, oh, uh, yeah. but just, just fart walking past people just because I'm gotten to that age now where it's just stupid humour is the only thing that gets me. So it's like <laughs> just sitting around people. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Such a child. But yeah, I'm you saying. used to out here one of the days sitting you and I had one of the girls oh, over that's for her you, hair. You were yeah. doing a girl's hair there, yeah. And I just... Yeah, I walked in with that in my hand there and let a few fly. It's so funny how, like, the, the stunned silence you get with it. And the same woman would have no problem in sticking her arse into her face and farting, like, yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? But, uh, <laughs> you just you just do it and don't acknowledge it and move on. Like, they're just kind of like, wait, what, what was that? What's that, yeah. <laughs> well, so somebody actually was going through the comments of, like, the last podcast I had you on there, which was years ago, actually. And I would have been happy to keep it that you were, way. You were much younger, thinner, curvaceous. Beautiful, you know, all the good things. <laughs> and I'm just left sitting here staring at this, this old bag. Thanks. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you hit 30, you know. Yeah, yeah. You're dragging your flaps along the floor now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Doing my best to try and pick them back up. But yeah, yeah. Breasts swinging down by the knees the whole lot. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't reach. Uh, no, I don't think I'll ever have that issue. <laughs> you're only like two fried eggs nailed to a wall. Yeah, no, just, literally. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, what, what was I going to say? I was, I was last podcast I had, yeah. John, somebody had asked on that if we're farting around each other yet. No. Well, I'm not. I continue to not. You can say no. <laughs> there are accidents. I just, t- once as an accident. I told, we're in the double digits now, the amount of times you've <laughs> accidentally let one rip around me. When the one time and where you were like holding one in and you decided to poke me into the side. 
and I poked you back and you immediately farted like a tickle me elbow of, uh, tickle me elbow of farts yeah, yeah. just immediately farted like, like I poked a whooping cushion <laughs> and I was like why would you poke me when you know that I'll retaliate and you're currently ago. on old in a fart <laughs> <laughs> that was years ago <laughs> but it's still like because I, I can get I can catch you by surprise by poking you or whatever like or you just you, you didn't expect that's fine but the fact that you went on the attack knowing that you had a flawed defence I thought I had a better hold okay <laughs> no, <I had laughs> a better hold a better hold yeah, yeah. I didn't realise my body would betray me like that <laughs> <laughs> actually the brother was on to me there recently the older brother and he's uh, he, he's needing a colonoscopy there Oh, lovely. Yeah, yeah. And he was asking me, he was, he, I said it to him there about how you got one done recently. Oh, yeah. And he's like, well, how was it for? And I was just like, first of all, I wanted to interview the doctor because I wanted to see what method he used to convince you to let him in there. Because <laughs> I haven't been allowed in there in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what, where, where's this form that she signed that, that allowed you in? Can I get one of them and bring it home? Well, you know... <laughs> Has he had that done yet, no? No, he's looking to get one done soon, though. Why would he look to get one done? Well, that's that's how you know does a man genuinely thinks there's something wrong with him when he vo- he's volunteering to get one. Like, Well, I hope his is better than mine. He was la- he was laughing the other day because he was saying that um, he he got a finger up the bum. Excellent. Um, you know, the, the doctor checking him, checking him out for something. And um, he said all he could think of was that scene from American Pie. I haven't seen American Pie. Have you not? No. There's a scene there where um, Sean William Scott's character, Stifler, oh. goes into a sperm bank. Right. And um, Oh, the, I think I've seen the clip of yeah, it, Yeah, so there's a really attractive nurse there, and he's like a real kind of a, a ladies man. Or not a ladies man, but he's a pure player. Like So he's just like, oh, I'll see if I can rope this one. Into <laughs> yeah. kind of give me a hand in here. And she uh, and he manages to convince her, but doesn't go the way he thinks it goes, because she puts on this latex gloves and tells him to bend forward at the table and puts both hands on the table. And she shoves a couple of digits up his arse <laughs> and, and presses on his prostate and just the face he starts pulling it, he's like, <laughs> like melting at the table. So the older brother was saying that's all he could imagine when the because when he done that was a female doctor. <laughs> so, oh God, above. <laughs> that's all he could imagine. That's all he could picture. No, mm. I've never. Sure maybe he's actually chasing after that. Maybe that's why he's looking for. Cool maybe so. <laughs> yeah, I look different strokes and all that. Like, yeah. but I wouldn't. I wouldn't be uh, volunteering. I told him that. Um, there's a camera there so he can get a look at the inside of himself if he wants and he's like what well, well, what do you want to see that for and I was like I don't know in case yeah, you wanted to see what the inside of yourself exactly. looks like I what do you want like, to how see often that do you get the opportunity to see the inside of your own body no like? no because the bastards fucking lied to me yeah you'll be sedated you won't feel a thing you'll just drift off and you'll wake back up I felt fucking everything yeah you, you walked in there and went right hold her down quick yeah like everything there's no time for lube <laughs> I just, I still have... like screwing it in there yeah. like somebody trying to get the cork out of a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> no, I still have fucking PTSD after that. The horrible bastards. I and they're talking away to me and they're like, give her some more sedation. I'm like, what fucking sedation? Mm. And the fucking nurse, in, an intern, sorry, an intern, put the IV in my, in my arm. Like... That bit between your wrist and your elbow, there, he put it there. Oh, yeah, that's where he put it on the top yeah, of your arm, yeah. Rather than putting it in the crook of my elbow or on the back of my hand, like, so I'm blaming him. I'm blaming well, him. Well, sure, he was probably taught uh, veins of vein, like, and he just thought nothing of it, but... I, well, I, I did comment, because when he started tapping my arm, I was like, are you putting it there? And he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, all right, okay, fair enough. Sure, I don't yeah, know but sure, like, you, I know a vein is a vein, but... but sure, you're gymming now, like, so you probably have veins in your arms there, like an old... An old aged penis. Yeah, but if that was the result of me not being, you know, actually, to be honest, one of the girls at work thing, thinks I'm just drug resistant. Remember the Valium for the dentist that oh, time? Oh, the dentist, yeah. <laughs> didn't yeah. do a thing to me. You took another one uh, recently again, didn't you? No. No? Oh, well, you just didn't bother no. this time, wouldn't no, it? No, that was the stuff I got from the hospital that time last year, that Xprim stuff, fucking. That was that was right stuff, that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that buzz going I had a right it. time on that. So <laughs> I had a great fucking time. Sitting there with your head rolling around there, just going, ah. Yeah, sitting there watching the telly going, oh, <laughs> feel a little bit fuzzy. I just imagine him standing next to the bed there and just, just jamming it up there and they're going, right, to let us know there if you feel a bit of pressure behind your nose. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird because you can feel it going through and whatever. And then when they're taking the biopsies and stuff, like, I, f- I felt all of that. Like, yeah, yeah. you're not supposed to. 
<laughs> yeah, no, it's just weird that they didn't have a concession. Like, uh, I, I don't know, maybe it's anybody from Ireland that's had a colonoscopy here listening in could tell us, but mm. we couldn't find a consensus online that whether or not they give you sedation for it. Like, some pla- some people were saying that they did get sedation, some people saying they didn't. Was it blowing, and- wasn't Clamel, was it, you went? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was blown Clamel, and you didn't get any kind of sedation or no, like, well, like, accent or anything. I like. asked him, I said, because that's obviously what I was worried about was that, and... I said, you know, am I going to be sedated? Like, I won't feel a thing now, will I? And every single one of them said, yeah, no, you'll be given sedation and and you won't feel a thing. You'll just drift off there. And they brought me down to the room and the doctor was chatting away to me and whatever. And then she said, right, I'm just going to give you this and whatever, just the oxygen mask and take deep breaths type of thing. That's the best way this will get into your system, whatever. No, she may as well have handed me a packet of fucking Smarties. Like, mm. <laughs> And then, obviously, when they took a biopsy, I felt it and I doubled over in pain. And she said, top her up there with blah, 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 blah. I'm like... Fill her up. I just, <laughs> just like, there with the petrol yoke in your yeah. ass. Yeah. <laughs> in my head, I was like, just just give me you to tell and pull me out of my fucking misery. Like, do you know, this is bullshit. <laughs> like, this is bullshit. Yeah. And then mm. the nurse then, one of the nurses had the fucking God then to say to me when they were wheeling me out of the room and I was in the hallway, like... And she stood beside me and she had the fucking sheer audacity to say to me, you didn't sleep at all, did you? I'm like, does the shit bear in the woods? Does the shit bear in the woods? Does the <laughs> shit in the woods? Does the shit bear in the woods? Oh, I hate myself. <laughs> I hate myself. So. This is weird. Does everybody point and laugh in the comments immediately. <laughs> <laughs> You're very stupid, you are. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, next topic. <laughs> right, what else do we have to talk about? I was going to talk about the Disneyland thing because I hadn't spoken to you on a podcast about that, but what, what I think would be more important to cover because I've already covered Disneyland on a, on a solo podcast, Poland Driftmasters. Yeah. She's she's finally done it. She's finally convinced me to go to Poland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're going to the opposite end of the country mm. that I wanted you to go to. It doesn't matter. I've been now. I, mm. I can, I don't want you to go. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what video it was. I can't remember that I did, but I did like a, a, an old tongue and cheek gag about how I think it was like women's suggestions for, for their fellas are always terrible compared to like fellas suggesting stuff for their mates because yeah. they're all like, let's go drinking and take the piss out of each other. And women are like, oh, let's go to the part and you do yogurt or whatever kind of <laughs> hairbrain stuff you do be coming up with. But uh, yeah, and in that cutaway I did about you wanting me to go to Poland, which was actually based on true events because you went yeah. to go see Auschwitz and... Yeah, well, it's a part of history. I think everyone should see it. It is a part of Yeah, fair enough. It is It is depressing, but... You could want to come back from a holiday and go, But see, after that holiday I need to take a week off work. No, because see what it, they do is if you book the right package, they book the right day trip and do Auschwitz and the salt mines, what they do is they bring you to Auschwitz and Birkenau, they depress the head off you, and then they bring you off to the salt mines, and that's nice, that's lovely, it's more cheery, you know, it's warm down what's, there. What's the salt mines about? Look, it was 2018 when I was oh, there. So okay. I immediately seen <laughs> a complete and utter vacant expression. You just like there's an empty room behind but you. Right? So I asked you that. It's a salt mine. <laughs> there's like a church and shit built down there and stuff like. And well, but the mines all, I assume. Yeah, but like it's a tour on it. Like you go down multiple levels. It's like you know, and and that. But it's it's lovely. Was it like the, the, the cheap table salt is up top and then you get that like Himalayan pink yeah, rock yeah. mountain salt. Yeah, right down at the b- down very bottom. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Dirt's molten core. I actually don't want, I'd have to go back through my pictures to remember what it even looked like. But I, I know why they do that. It's because they've depressed the head off you with Auschwitz and Barkenau. Yeah, you and then remember they, the butterbeer though, don't you? Yeah. The, the, the girl that I went with, a friend of hers had been to Krakow before and said he found this Harry Potter cafe type of thing so he gave her I can't remember did he give her like the address or tell her the, the name of it or whatever and bear in mind we went to Poland the end of November 2018 I have never in my life felt cold like it ever and I never want to experience <laughs> it again and this one was like oh we have to go and see this dragon that blows fire and we have to do this and let's walk fucking miles to find a cafe um but it was it was actually worth it because the way they did it, it looked like you were walking in between two 
like it looked like you were walking nearly into somebody's house kind of thing. Mm. And then there was like a, f- couple, a flight of steps going down the way. And then there was a door. But the door, the back of the door looked like a bookcase. Mm. And we were like, it's not in there. It was really badly signposted as well, first off. Mm. So we went, fuck it, let's try it. And sure enough, it was in there. We were like, ah, it's a magic door. Magic door, yeah. Clever. <laughs> you know, the, place, the places we've travelled to, like the, when you're trying to find some specific restaurant or something you found on Google Maps, they're all, a lot of the time they're like next to impossible. Yeah. They're, not, they're yeah. so terribly signposted. But so, yeah, so we're going to, we're going to Poland. We're going to Warsaw. Warsaw. And uh, we're going to see the, the Driftmasters finals for 2024. Yeah. Yeah. Spend the day drinking, watching cars going sideways and going brr. <laughs> brr. <laughs> <laughs> brr and bap, bap, bap. Um, with any luck, we might see a crash again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the highlight of any sport. Like I, I started know. watching F- F- Formula One recently. Like, And when a race happens when nobody's crashed, I'm like, that was a shit race that was. <laughs> It's like me so, watching the UFC so, going, there's no blood. Yeah, yeah, so just give me, give me a bit of drama, a bit of theatre, like, you know, just, you know, it's like when, oh, they do this thing, right, they have these, like, wet r- tyres for mm-hmm. wet weather for, like, standing water and stuff like that. Yeah. But then they go ahead and cancel a race when it's raining. And well, I was just like, that's prime crashing yeah. opportunities. That's Let crashing on, prime like. time television. <laughs> and you're taking that away from me. Let them on the track. Let them crash. <laughs> yeah. For my amusement. I want to see it. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> so to be right good to be watching like you know <laughs> but uh yeah so but we're, but the old drifting like it doesn't have the same level of crashes unless you're james dean actually in america where you practically well, yeah, yeah, yeah. nearly threw the car into the stands essentially <laughs> <laughs> up and off which you know no i know it's and it's only kind of like is it like a malfunction or something or whatever if, who was it that crashed when we were seeing him in mandela um and to be fair Darren mcnamara wasn't it? he went backwards into the the tire thing yeah and like pro- hit it hard enough now already. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He hit a bang. For I'm fairly things. sure it was McMahon. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's a nice bit bit of drama. It is. It was interesting. Bit of substance though. to it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but uh, the whole thing with Warsaw and going to Poland is you don't know just how psychotic the people are when they're driving. Um, and my mother, who works in the travel agents, booked the whole thing for us and has. Ever so caringly put us in a hour long private transfer. So it's not the plane trip that'll kill us, it's the car journey. Did they, did they do a tipping thing over there? I didn't, we me, we didn't tip. This is where we were only short of giving your men in the Czech Republic a crisp high five when we got out of the taxi. Like we didn't realise the whole. Apparently they actually have, you know the Czech Republic? You know the way we practically had the tip everywhere? Now? Yeah. That's just in Prague. That's not a like... I don't think so. I, I'm just trying to think back to when I was in, in Krakow. We didn't. No, I didn't tip over there. Well, I wouldn't tip a taxi driver if I'm already paying him. And let's be fair. Oh, no, it. he'll have been paid, like, so fuck yeah. him. Yeah, well, it's, there we go. But, uh, like, there's, there's, there's very little I know about Poland. There's only one thing I truly know. Two things that I truly know about Poland. So yeah. like One of the best drifters in the world, Peter Wiencek, is Polish. Oh, yeah. And number two is, um, and a lot of fellas out there in particular agree with me they do have some very good looking women in, yeah from, they do from Poland. Yeah. yeah they do just the, the culture shock Ireland got when they started shipping Polish women over here <laughs> yeah and the rest of the weathered old crows the, the, the Irish women that were practically like oh, sludge they're just bred differently yeah they, they, they all put makeup on with a shotgun before Polish women got here <laughs> they, they all look like the lynch should find the end of your pocket and then some actual competition <laughs> arrived on and they're like, oh no. We have to step up our game. And they like, and they tried to make it a, a kind of a, a taboo. I was like, oh, he's after going off with a Polish one there now. Old Tommy down the road. He's yeah, got a Polish. Yeah, yeah. Tried to make it a taboo but it didn't work because the fella was like, <laughs> fuck you. Yeah, look at this yeah. one. She's class. <laughs> so nobody in her country would look at her twice. Over here, she's a supermodel. Polish and Swedish women. Because she doesn't speak a word of English. It doesn't matter. We'll find a way. Oh, yeah. We'll, 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 we'll work it out. Minor detail. I've known less about women and we've, we've made it work. <laughs> <laughs> what a one for five years. Didn't even know her name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is men out there like that, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, I wish I was one of them. I feel like, I, like my ideal relationship would be like the same relationship two, two people share in the waiting room of a doctor's. What, well, you're there because you have to be? Well, you just kind of smile and nod at each other and then you say <laughs> nothing for ages because somebody might bring up the, com- the topic of conversation of why you're there yeah. and you don't want to say, well, I have mould of the ring. <laughs> you have ring mould. That is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> There's cheese going out of my eyes. Stop. 
I don't know. You know, no, nobody wants to talk about it. So they sit, they sit in that quiet, awkward side. That's that'd be my perfect relationship. Just just an acknowledgement every now and again. Well, your grand. tough shit. <laughs> That's all I have to say. All I want out of the relationship is just long drawn out silences and occasionally, occasionally you put your finger up my bum. That's that's the doctor's way. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> then you give me some drugs and send me away. <laughs> <laughs> the, the good stuff. Yeah. There's some Valium for you there. Go on. What's your business now? Fucking Valium. Doesn't do a thing. I'm sure you've all taken out at this stage. You're going to sound like a proper addict on this. I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and you couldn't be further from it. You're I, the one that refuses to take a Panadol when you have a headache. I don't refuse. To. It's just... If it's Sometimes you do. I feel like you're just like complaining about the headache more than bad at all, getting rid of it. I'll take one. I want to take it just for the sake of taking it. Like, like I feel like my most spoken phrase in this relationship is take a Panadol. Maybe you're the addict. I am not the addict. Mm. I am not the addict. I've never taken a Panadol in my life. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and anybody who does is a bla- says that I tell you those a liar. <laughs> they go to hell. I want to see the proof. <laughs> <laughs> Photographic evidence. Uh, yeah, I'd, see, I'd pass any blood test. There's not a, there's not a, an ounce of Panadol in my system. <laughs> I'm a man, a white knuckle to pain. I challenged a headache to a fight. That's what I do. Do you? Yeah, yeah. 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 So what do you think that I'm finally upgrading your character model? I'm finally getting around to upgrading your character model. And by I, I mean I've sent it off to somebody much more talented than I am. <laughs> Rokata, who, who does all my characters to, to finally update the character model. And what do I think about it? What do you think, yeah, seeing as you actually have a say in what the character looks like this time? Since when? Since I sat you down and you told me what you wanted oh, yeah, the character to be wearing and what the hair stuff, looks yeah, like. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't know what to say about it <laughs> yeah, it's a long time coming though because like the original Connie model I didn't actually really model it after you at all I just needed a, a, f- a female, female generic duck because I didn't realise I'd be going into telling stories about my own life I yeah, just wanted yeah. a female character to kind of act as your stand-in from taking to be honest it's going to be like brand new information anyway because I can't remember what I picked like I can't, yeah, no. I can't remember well, yeah it's because I didn't need it for any one particular video so like uh, Rokat is putting it on the long finger and just doing it whenever he gets a chance yeah but uh, yeah it be interesting to see how that looks yeah. well, what's going to be funnier is the character is finally going to have pink hair to reflect <laughs> your pink hair in real life and you're changing it in a couple of I weeks. know, I know. <laughs> you're going back blonde. Well, I gave you long enough. I've had this for the last three and a half years. Well, that's true too, yeah. Yeah, it's so that's, that's on you, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually been multiple colours over the last three and a half years. You have done, yeah. What have you gone through now? So, pink, pink and blue, pink and purple, pink and orange. I like the pink and orange. And yeah, but it didn't last. Like, and mm. I'm fuck that. That's too much effort. Yeah, I no, don't have the time nor the want to be too high maintenance. To be upkeeping at you, and mm. I am not high maintenance. So, what <laughs> yeah. um, it was just nice to be able to wash your hair without having the I just, other team of scientists there to split it. And was it the first? Actually, it yeah. was with the blue. You had to split. Yeah, it sitting there like a little, 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 little hairdresser. So she yeah. had this. She had her hair split in the middle, so it was blue one side and was. Pink, pink, pink and the, the other. other side. But, but the couldn't wash it together because the blue would run into the pink and turn it purple. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So I had to sit there like a hairdresser there with the, the back of the comb, with the pointy bit of the back yeah, of the comb yeah. there and separate every single strand. Uh, and so I, there was no blue on the left and there was no pink on the right or whatever. Uh, to be fair, I kept that for what? Eight, nine months? Mm. Like, that's a long time to be doing that. Like mm. so, so I just need a break now from having to bleach the shower every time after I wash my hair and my pillowcase is being stained. Mm. Yeah, and me pulling random pink hairs out of my crack. <laughs> me the other day in the shower, actually. I didn't mean to tell you. And I think I'm, I think I'm starting to, like, hone in on how it happens. Okay. It's because you keep sticking your hair to the walls and the, 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 the edge of the shower. <laughs> but I told it's it to the bin. Eventually. <laughs> but a couple of showers happens in between that. Like, you know, no, it doesn't. Those, I can fucking get in there and I find little balled up clumps of pink <laughs> yeah, hair. Yeah, but because, it, right, our upstairs shower is, funnily enough, um, a disabled access shower, uh, which makes complete sense. Yeah, yeah, you have to go up the fucking stairs to use it. Yeah, that's, that's actually pretty funny. Yeah, so basically the house we're living in now has two bathrooms. Both of them have showers in them. But the one upstairs is like disabled access. So you, you could basically roll a wheelchair yeah. there if you want. I'm assuming yeah. like an elderly person or somebody who was disabled used to live here uh, a while back. Like so, But the thing is, the one that has disabled access is also the one that's upstairs, upstairs. rather than the one that's on ground yeah, level. Like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so obviously the flooring is not... It's great. It's a great. Yeah, it's like a cattle great, yeah. Yeah. So, like, I can't, I have to, as I'm brushing my hair or the conditioner through my hair, I have to 
pull all the hair that comes loose out because otherwise it'll get caught in the fucking grate and it's a pain to clean. Mm. But that's what I think what happens because I was showering there the other day when I was scrubbing my crack. I uh, caught hold of a hair and out it came there like literally credit card in my arse. <laughs> and I was just like, this is the only time that I could possibly, because it happens to me all the time, every now and again, I could be scratching my arse, the next thing I pulled this big, <laughs> long, ridiculous hair out, and I'm like, how did it even get there? Because I wash my own clothes, it's not like you're washing me boxers yeah, or something, and yeah. then the hair drops in, no, it doesn't happen. So the only time my arse is vulnerable enough to get one of your <laughs> hairs at him, is, yeah, yeah, it's either in the shower, it's only in the shower, because any filthy activities, your hair is tied up, like, yeah. So, yeah. so it can only be there, so I'm just like, that must be, I must be like walking Touch me arse off the wall. or Through a cobweb. But it doesn't be on the wall. May, maybe like one of your hairs came loose and landed on me loofah thing that I scrubbed myself with. Like, you know. <laughs> I just, it's taken me 10 years, but I feel like I'm honing in them. Yeah. I'm, like a, I'm like a weather detective. I, <laughs> I smoke far, 40 cigarettes a day there. Are I you carry finally, a bottle of whiskey in my pocket. The light bulb has gone off. And, and yeah, I'm finally honing in. <laughs> it's a eureka moment. <laughs> Right, um, we're, we're, we're recording a while, so what I'm going to do is we're going to end this podcast out with a lot of questions, because I did a post before this podcast. Okay. It was actually months ago, but you know how timely I am with getting things done. Yeah. Um, so we have loads of questions from the viewers. Hold on there, and I reach for my mouse, that we can uh, go through one by one there. Lovely. And uh, you have to answer immediately. No hesitation. You can't stutter. Um, you can't mix up your words. Like, you can't bear in the shit. Shit in the bear. Shit in the bear. Yeah. <laughs> Or was it? Does the shit bear in the woods? <laughs> yeah, there we go. You can't, you can't be doing that. That's the right answer. <laughs> Don't even make them funny. Factual. I want all information. Okay. Um, Mr. Hooded Raven says, is Connie still obsessed with air fresheners? Not so much recently. I haven't noticed you were going around spraying much in the way of air fresheners. No, but I did light some wax melts today because I cleaned the house. You tried uh, incense. Yeah, fucking other. dirty bastards. Rotten, rotten yolks. <laughs> they, they're, they hurt every sense they, they hurt my nose they hurt my eyes they're just horrible <laughs> so incense just reminds me of that little like uh do you know that bong on a rope that a priest would be swinging as he's walking yeah down? yeah the frankincense yeah like, yeah, yeah. Mm. Like weed or whatever he has in it there just to get <laughs> how else do you get people to believe in that nonsense like, oh, you know you have to kind of you have to drug them like <laughs> so we've this magic book that was written by sheep farmers two thousand years ago mm. how do we talk people into this like, oh, just get them all high and light some weed there and swing it around <laughs> Even the automatic air fresheners. I haven't bought one of them in a long time because they're not no, on offer and I refuse to give the price for them. So and do you also have to listen to me give you shit over them? Yeah, but it's also really funny. <laughs> not funny. It is funny. I threw a whole cup of coffee in the wall. I know. <laughs> and I'm still sorry I wasn't I was more annoyed with myself <laughs> that even it was too late. I couldn't move my hand out of the way when it sprayed directly into the cup, but some for some reason my brain still went, ah, quick, pull it away. It's too, it was too late. So I just, for no reason, threw it on the wall. The cup was done anyway. Like. Oh, it's still so funny. It's just so funny. Or, wish or, I had or that night here where I was like pure freaked out. I was like, what the fuck is that noise? Okay, like I was, thought there was somebody sneaking around the house, like. Right like there picking up the scissors. They're going out as if I was going to be able to take down two lads that yeah, had the drop yeah. on me, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh god stupid joke um, the original caffeinator says this one's for the missus how involved were you in the creation of the ducks version of the design and style oh we've already covered that yeah, yeah. She, she, she practically you didn't have any input at all in the very no. first Connie model which is the current Connie model yeah. um, until I change it very soon um, but yeah uh, plaid short anomalies and uh, oh, I hate that word. Plaid short anomaly. Anomaly. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> uh, uh, what are your tips for couples just starting to live together? Is there anything in particular you'd advise doing or suggest avoiding? What causes the most disagreements in your opinion? Um, space. Space, yeah. It's definitely space. Yeah. Go you away. need to have your own space. You need to be able to do your own thing. Like, and yeah. Have your own series to watch. Don't make every series yeah. a couple series because let's be fair, you both watch them at different tempos. So you yeah. just get a, one, you'll be just annoyed that the other person's gone to bed. Yeah, and, and you change. can't continue it on. <laughs> what? Is that a other series we start watching recently? It's Oh, the yeah. Alienist. Yeah, yeah, I was sitting there the other night and I was just like, just go watch another episode of that there now. And I was like, can't. Problem no, is I get to, you but can't. I, but I get too <laughs> invested in these things there and you go to bed and I'm just like, ah, fucking bitch. No, yeah, know. but sure, that's that's why we'll watch nothing else when uh, when we spend our next day together. Well, and was, we'll just, there's only yeah. one thing worse than 
having a series that you can watch that you can't because it's a couple of series and it's that is having nothing, nothing to watch, watch as a couple. You're yeah. sitting there browsing Netflix yeah. as if it's, you know, something's going to come up in the next five mm. minutes. But uh, yeah, space from each other because you're like, I think the biggest problem in relationships is when you spend too much time around each other. As we know from going holidays. Yeah. You're, spend, a, you're, spend a week together. You just want you start to get away bit, from one another. Yeah, you start getting a bit on. short with each other at the end of that week because yeah. you're like, I've, I've had enough now and I just, mm. I need to get back into my own head or do my own thing. But yeah, space is definitely the main thing. Have one dedicated day where you do hang out. So yeah. there's no ambiguity about yeah. that. Like, you know, Whether you stay in the house or you go off and you do something, just allocate a day. Yeah, a day, day. That's what we do every yeah. Sunday now where we're just hanging out. But um, that, that's come leaps and because then you don't have the whole, oh, you're always off doing this or you're always, you yeah. never make time for me. Uh, that kind of eliminates that then. And then like if like this Sunday I'm going to li- Limerick with my brother, so organise another day. No, I told you about this. I'm sorry, that that comes out of your. No, time. yeah, no, it doesn't. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It's like to be fair, if men had that way, they'd be just like, oh, "What do you mean, hang out again? You didn't only hang out with you like two months ago." Like. <laughs> Just get off me! You're all over me. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> but no, yeah, space and have your own like friends and stuff like that. You don't all have to be in the one click, like mm. Alicia or Alyssa. I've you know, I used to get her name right. She's She's been a, a patron member for ages. Yeah. And she told me I got it right once. And then the very next time I called it out, I got it wrong. So it's mm. Alicia or Lisa. I get it wrong every time. Well, I can't see it, so I can't help. <laughs> A-L-I-S-H-A. Let's see how you do. Alicia. It's either Alyssa. Alicia? Alicia. Alicia. I used to work with a girl called Alicia. It's a weird old name, isn't it? But she says... I would be interested in a school story from her as an Irish schools seem to have a, a lot of a lot more going on and maybe even some chat or a rant about previous jobs similar to how you had your retail or customer service friends. So You don't need a rant from me about my current job because that'll never end. Yeah, she's um, gone down to four days a week now. She's delighted. Yeah. She was five. It's Wednesday and I'm sitting at home. Oh, no, yeah, <laughs> I got great, so isn't? much done today. It's great. <laughs> Um, We're around the place like a little cleaning gremlin there. Yeah. Hey, I was having a great time jamming away there to Teddy Swims this morning. When you're clean, you, you, go, you go through mood swings because you go, you're really happy when you get something clean and spotless. But if I talk to you like midway through, you're like, get back, you little uh, bastard. Don't like, <laughs> touch it. It's clean. <laughs> I never liked you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Jekyll and Hyde out there in the hall. <laughs> <laughs> like don't walk on my floor I just yeah. washed it <laughs> yeah. just like a really untrusting dog there like at a pound you're just like I don't know is he nice now or is it, would he go off now <laughs> yeah. that's you, what I plan on doing on Saturday when you're gone off there I'm gonna tackle upstairs I'm gonna strip the bit lads this is what happens when you hit no, 30 you'll like. find all my nudie magazines will I yeah that's all okay. those naked men I don't want you to see them <laughs> would answer a lot of questions to be fair um what it was? Just thinking? because I'm not eating doesn't mean I can't look at the menu. Yeah, well, that's okay. <laughs> I could say the same. <laughs> so you know, you know, I deep down really want to be gay. It's just I'm not. <laughs> I want to get away from me nutcases of, of women. Hey, gay men are worse than than gay women. No, I want to break them all. Have you ever I seen want RuPaul's to be a straight Drag Race? Gay man. Have you ever seen RuPaul's Drag Race? They are ways. Waste, drag waste, drag waste, <laughs> drag waste. <laughs> oh, that sounds so cool. I swear to God, I think I'm having many. Tell stalls. me more about the drag waste. <laughs> <laughs> a group of gay men are worse than any woman. But I'd do, I, I'd be like a really straight, like you know what it was like. They're rare, they're like unicorns. But I'd be like the gay lad that you'd never tell he was gay, you know. Mm. And then I would only, I'd only want to get off with other men like that as well because I think if you're gay and you're getting off with an effeminate man, yeah. You're not, you're not full blow. You're like 90% gay. You're not all the way. Like, yeah, yeah. You yeah. really want a man's man. You want the lumberjack you need there. need a man's man. Yeah, yeah. 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 You'd want somebody that'll frighten you in the way. <sighs> like, you know, you, you you feel like your life could be in danger. That's the man I want. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, what's I want him to be dangerous enough to make me feel safe. Like, Reacher, which are one. Yeah, yeah. The old vanilla gorilla. Yeah. yeah. We're watching that series, the, the, that Reacher series. The, the laughing we did at that scene where he's trying to jump the fence. Yeah, <laughs> a man his size got, should not be Does this say there was like, like an episode three or episode four where he jumps this like he chain scales link. scales the fence chain. where you can see it bowing under yeah, the Yeah, yeah, they, they do a sudden cut when he was about halfway up it and then like it's just, you know, cuts to him jump after jumping over the top of it. And I just took off into a fit of laughing 
and we went back and watched the scene because we know there's no way a man of that size could Can scale. Can do something yeah, like he that, Jeff. He, did, he didn't pull himself up. He pulled the gate or the fence down. <laughs> down. <laughs> <laughs> he just bent it enough to get himself <laughs> over it. Yeah, yeah. It's just oh. like somebody climbing over an old a wire in a field you know you just yeah, push it yeah, down yeah, there yeah. and swing your leg out over and this yoke was like a 10 foot tall chain link fence <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing and just he's not nimble like he's no, not no. nimble like, he's an absolute brick of a man <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing just bowed and the second the, the fence started to give they cut and suddenly he's just landed <laughs> he's on the other side <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like they got one take of that and he's made shit of the fence <laughs> <laughs> he could have just ran through it like he could have yeah, yeah it would have been like a cartoon yeah he would have just cut a hole or and just two, go, two yeah, holes straight through. a reacher shaped hole in the fence. But yeah, to, to get to Coventry, have any good um, school stories? School. I went to an all girls school. Um, I was incredibly shy in school. I had my own little clique, little weirdos that we were. Um, I don't know, I, maybe it's just me. I just can't imagine you with friends. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't. The only what the only thing that stands out in my mind from school was the time I fell down the stairs, and it was a marble staircase. Um, that how, hurt. How did you fall down the stairs? Did I not well, tell you that? That's no, but like it's also not the first time you fell down some stairs. You bust yourself blowing Waterford when I you did, fell down your heels. I did. Nearly yeah. broke my fucking ankle coming down the stairs inside in Crystal. Yeah. But I was drunk then, you see. That was fine. That was the beginning to the end of the high, high heels. I haven't seen you in high, it, high heels in about six years, I'd say. Yeah, that, that hurt my ego a small bit, that did. But how um, did you manage to fall down the school stairs? So, the stairs were, all the stairs in the school were marble, right? Stupid. Nice, cold, hard marble. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, that you're guaranteed to crack your skull on. Well, like, at least you were wearing pants. yeah. Uh, yeah. not, not a skirt not that a skirt make no, you wear. no but <laughs> it was like torrential rain outside and I think we were going down to some sort of an assembly or we were going down to a class I can't remember and one of my good friends was with me and a cousin of mine was behind me and uh, was walking along but the stairs were soaked because obviously it was pissing rain outside and everyone was coming in trapes and fucking puddles all over the place and I just hit the step funny. I was just walking down and I wasn't running or nothing. And I just hit the step funny. And my foot went straight out from under me. And I went down on the stairs like a sack of shit. Do you do like a comedy movie slip where the leg went straight up and over the I, head, like. Do you know what? I don't know. But you know you have a true f- friend when one of them stands there and absolutely wets themselves laughing at you. <laughs> and you're in an absolute heap. But I remember distinctly coming down on my left elbow. So I took all the weight on my oh, left. Did you hear the knock of your elbow? Oh hitting yeah, the, I did. The yeah. Marble. I hit my, on right on the edge of the step and everything. It wasn't on the flat surface. It was like right on the edge of the step. All my weight hit my left elbow, but that wasn't even the worst bit. My elbow was fine. My arm was fine. It was my arse cheek had the biggest bruise. Oh, I thought you were going to tell me like your arse cheek had like imprinted on the marble or no something. no no like I hit it that hard that I couldn't sit <laughs> on my left arse cheek like anytime I sat down I had to sit with the majority of my weight on my right side but like the bruise it was huge it was essentially the size of my arse cheek like um but yeah she stood there in an absolute Luban busting her whole laughing at me the other one behind me went pale I was, she was like are you okay I was like <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, as I, as I told you before, that's my metric for gauging if you're considered to be old by people or not. Yeah. That um, how you know everyone around you perceives you as old is when they don't laugh when you fall down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. well, she nearly had to be taken off to hospital because she couldn't breathe. She was laughing at me <laughs> so much. And then she proceeded, once I was up and nothing was broken and anything like that, she proceeded to then call me a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you know? mm. um, but that's the only thing that kind of because that it actually really hurt like mm. it did it really hurt oh, I, know, I know that feeling but you're back years ago on a skateboard and the amount of times it came off my skateboard mm. and you'd land on your elbow because like, a lot of times skateboard would fly forward so you'd go back yeah, and then you'd put out your elbows to, to like, if, catch I, honest, yourself, like if I landed flat on my back it probably wouldn't hurt as much like stuntmen are taught to land on the flat of their back because it spreads out the impact so yeah. it doesn't hurt as much no, I'd put out both my elbows and I'd come down just on the points of my elbows. And the sound of the the knock your elbow makes when it hits when it tarmac. Hits, yeah. Like, yeah. I just imagine that some scientist 
sitting at this Richter scale for measuring earthquakes and there's just one <laughs> sudden spike out of nowhere and he's like jeez what, what the, the fuck, fuck is that, that? yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just me on the ground there's like, <laughs> balling there, there was another oh, again myself and, and this particular girl we had a study class when everyone else was doing like chemistry and history and things like that and we were sitting in on a business class that was like it was like past levels so like lower level but there was a really small number of like I think it was like 10 people in the class but the teacher that taught it had an awful stutter and I know we shut and I laughed but anytime he stuttered and was writing on the board he, he'd write the word he was stuttering each time he'd write the stutter <laughs> He'd be going, the, 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 we'd write it as he was going along. He genuinely, we so, looked at so the board. So he wrote exactly how he spoke. Yeah, like we genuinely, we had looked at it numerous times going, is, is he actually doing that? There's well, no, it, he was. There's in that word there is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or whatever word he's thought yeah. around, he'd end up writing it as he's going because he just couldn't get himself out of it like. Yeah, yeah. So then the girls figured out that he got real awkward if you asked could you go to the toilet? Mm. So that broke the stutter. So anytime he stuttered, then the girls go, uh, sir, can, can I go to the toilet? Yeah, 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 yeah. is all you get. Like <laughs> snap him out of it. Yeah, yeah. And then he'd walk back to the desk and he'd be grinding in after that. <laughs> that kind of stinks of like, like an old jukebox where you have to hit it the belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not there anymore, <laughs> I don't think. We had a teacher there, a science teacher, Mr. Crotty, and I've talked about it in a video before, but um, he was like, he was really awkward you could tell like mm. he wasn't very he wasn't a sociable kind and one of the girls that went to school with Kelly used to always ask him like really inappropriate questions vaguely disguised as genuine questions right so he was talking about like the reproductive system and stuff like that and Kelly turns on stuck up her hand she's like sir he's like yes Kelly what does semen taste like <laughs> <laughs> like you know it's just <laughs> fuck's sake uh, you know it was on topic so he couldn't yeah. really you know, and she kept like, you know, again, what's the smell like? All this kind of stuff, like, but, uh, yeah, Jesus. And he'd never answer. He'd just go, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd never. <laughs> like, but, uh, should we move on to the next question? Because I've just lost my train of thought there. Yeah. Um, this one from Anthony Todd says, did Connie ever have a living with the girls period of her life? Uh, like, no, actually, I just thought of a question. Mm. I was about to ask there because it's really interesting, but it's gone. When I went to school there, when we were, we had an event where one of the lads, a fellow by the name of James, was caught having an old Tom Hank under the desk, you know, going at himself. Right. I- interfering with himself. Yeah, as yeah, they'd say. yeah. Um, I'm just wondering if that, and like that ever happened in an all-girls school? Because this was a mixed school we went to. Yeah. So you kind of understand there, just women about in the classroom, hormones running wild. The man chanced his arm and, and, and his other leg. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. Um... Was there ever any events no, like that? I don't think so. Well, she's all very well behaved. I feel like Well there probably was, but like I like like I said, I have a very small click click. I mm. didn't want to be You weren't cool. I wasn't you, in the cool you, group. You would have no. wanted to get your head pushed into a locker, was it? No, I wasn't quite that bad. No, I wasn't <laughs> quite that bad. But uh no, I don't think so. It's kind of it's kind of awkward for a woman. Do you know what I mean? Not impossible though. No, but I'm no. sure there was one or two that maybe may, so, may have. maybe so, but because like you know, you see all these like things on the on the internet and Instagram and all this kind of stuff. These these red pill podcasts and it's just these loads of lads arguing against women about yeah. how women are scum and then how women are arguing against fellas and how fellas are scum. They're both identical. They're yeah. both exactly the same, and I think yeah. women are capable of being just as dirty bastards as fellas are. Yeah. So yeah, I, w- I wouldn't question it for a minute now to, to, to maybe there bean, was but I never heard of anything some beans were flicked around them classrooms I'm sure probably was yeah but uh, anyway Anthony Todd says did Connie ever have a living with a girl's period of her life you did yeah in college wouldn't it it wasn't obviously that long like because I was only in college for two years yeah it's just two years of sexual experimentation I'm sure yeah yeah but um, in the first year I lived with I didn't know who I was living with actually because I, I didn't know anyone going to that college so I was just going down blind um and i was living with a girl named clara and a fella named john john was lovely um Slut. john had a girlfriend they're actually <laughs> i think they're actually married now um but yeah i didn't really spend much of my time in that apartment because i made friends with a girl from town her sister mm. um and she lived in the apartment below me and I kind of stayed most of my time down there because her place was quieter mm. <laughs> and I didn't really go out drinking or anything. I like that. I wasn't. You, you stayed in reading your Bible? 
I did, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Praying, that's why your knees got calluses on them. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly that's what you're telling me. Yeah, but <laughs> no, I didn't really put in or out with them, to be honest, because like that, I, I didn't really kind of come out of myself, I suppose, until, well, I suppose in the last 10 years or so, mm. really. Um, See, I don't like questions like these because like up here, you were long college experimenting widely with other women doing all sorts of despicable and the filings of of each other and I like that image yeah. and I feel like you're just taking, I'm that, ruining you're it. taking that away from me yeah, yeah. like the, the the debauchery that's going on up here <laughs> you wouldn't believe mm. I've, I've seen far too many internet videos yeah I feel like it's influencing my thoughts <laughs> and it, it, it didn't happen like that at all <laughs> no <laughs> but no then in my second year I lived with Sean oh very good and sure we were both as quiet as each other so it suited us down to the ground, like. Do any of them ever have any, like, do you ever go to war fighting over chores and stuff? Because I'd imagine two, no. two women living together fighting over how something is supposed to be done and no. where it's supposed to go. Me like, I could just imagine it would be just, it'd be like the troubles all over again, no. civil war. Me and Chan had a right good thing going. Um, and then after Christmas, there was another person living there and she upset the whole thing. But however, um, it wasn't actually until I left college and then I went back down to visit her while she was still in college that the stories kind of came like the night of the big mess and mm, yeah for like rag week and stuff like that uh, yeah, fact, yeah yeah the pivot thing you know there mm. was there was yeah there was a lot of good stories there like you know yeah, we wrecked that fucking apartment so <laughs> <laughs> very very good right we got um, a few more questions to go through here yeah. we've got SAC47 or SAK47 says hello Connie and Ducky greetings from the land of the Vikings Denmark excellent uh, mm, you love that now you excellent. love the last kingdom and the Vikings and yeah, all that kind of stuff you do that, indeed yeah. what was the thing you mentioned there the last podcast Wardruna Wardruna somebody, yeah. somebody in the comments were just like wow I can't believe it she actually Wardruna got a mention yeah yeah <laughs> went to see them live and everything mm. Um, they said, I have a few questions for the two of you. So a question for Connie. Have you ever met any of Ducky's friends like PJ and Hef? And if yes, what do you think of them? Yeah, you have. Sure. You've known mm. them as long as you've known me. Like, Yeah, obviously not as well yeah. as you. Obviously. Well, sure. Like, that's the thing. Um, when uh, Back when I was working in Extra Vision with your mother, mm. Hef was only working a couple of shops down. Yeah. So you got to know him by proxy as well. I did, yeah. And I, uh, to be fair, any time I was going through the shopping centre, if he was working, I would stop in and say hi to him. Like, yeah. And, and uh, but I think I probably know him. Well, no. I, I, I would have said I know him more than the rest of them. Yeah, yeah. But he's got MIA, so. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, she's married. Dead now. Yeah. PJ. Yeah, sure, PJ is yeah. off and up and down to me there. And she, yeah, she knows him well enough. Yeah. Um, he's, He goes on to say, a question for Connie. What do you think of Ducky's family? Um, his siblings and whatnot. Says the mother butcher. I, I, your opinion on her hasn't changed now in a few years. In a few years. A few years, yeah. Well, sure, she can't do She's anything. She's been very yeah. quiet now. Yeah, she has. Yeah, she yeah. can't do anything to change the opinion, <laughs> the creator. But, um, for, for context, she's dead. <laughs> yeah, sort of the creator, yeah. Um, um, so the siblings, yeah. The siblings, well, one of them is on, on their way over because I was stupid and did hairdressing for a living and people still hold that over me. Yeah, she wants her hair done. <laughs> um, and the yeah. other two. Granger. Granger. The Granger. <laughs> They're there. <laughs> They're siblings. <laughs> and he goes on to say, question for Ducky, what is your proudest moment of 2023? Oh, what was my proudest moment of leaving Disneyland? That was pretty good. Fuck off. <laughs> It was um, proven that I was right all along when I bought a fast pass thing for Disney, so we didn't have to wait in line for an hour. I was pretty proud of that. Yeah, but it would have also <gasps> cost a small fortune. I know my proudest moment what? of 2023 when we were shopping. Oh my, that was me. You're it's, proud of me. <laughs> I'm proud of you. You're my proudest moment of 2023. And you're after yeah. 10 years yeah. together, I finally yeah, started dude. to catch up. So what happened was we were shopping. <laughs> And like my videos aren't an exaggeration. I do an awful lot of yeah. puns and shit jokes and what have you. And we were in the vegetable aisle of the shop and she was looking for vegetables <laughs> um, to put into her stir fry. And um, she was looking at mushrooms and I pointed at him and said, you're not going to fit them into the wok. And she turned and said, why? Because there won't be mushroom. <laughs> and my face lit up. I was like, oh my God, it's finally worked. It's, she's coming to the dark side. Yes. That's good, the smartest good. I think I've ever been. It's the <laughs> quickest I've ever been. My brain just went like Sheldon Cooper and was like, why won't they fit? 
much room there won't be much room much room <laughs> I was like and this happened literally within a split second I was so proud of myself <laughs> oh yeah I was so proud of you I was like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> the brain is finally coming around <laughs> Maybe that's a sign of aging, though, as well. Maybe. Like, <laughs> could be. Oh, you're, t- you're 30 now, like, you yeah. know. You wouldn't have got that when you were 29. No, no, I definitely <laughs> wouldn't. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that was my proudest moment where she's fi- she finally completed a shit job. <laughs> bet me to the punchline. <laughs> yeah. uh, question for Connie. Has Ducky changed since he became a full-time YouTuber? No. No, I don't think The I jokes know. got worse. Jokes got worse. My mood, my mood improved. So <laughs> yeah. So rather than the jokes, he found being, the loophole. <laughs> rather than the jokes being these, these kind of edgier, darker jokes, they've lightened up a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and in a way, become worse because they're like Christmas cracker jokes now. And yeah. You, you, you hate yourself for laughing at them. Yeah. And for some reason, that gives me even more pleasure. Like because you can hear my eyeballs roll. Yeah, making, <laughs> making people cringe and uncomfortable. Just. I don't know why, but I really enjoy it. That's why I got that pooter. Oh, yeah, fair was Because I feed off the second-hand embarrassment of people around me. <laughs> uh, Stanley Schaefer says, For Connie and Ducky, what has been your favourite place to travel so far? Well, I know yours. I don't know how to say it. Florida, that's where you've gone. And that's you love the most because you got to go to Universal and Disney. Double barrel. Mine. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Mm. And they're making a Nintendo World. I'm, I think my favourite. Nintendo World, actually. I wouldn't mind going to. So we can go to Florida. I'm just trying to think of a way I can get revenge to I it. won't make you go to Disney. I won't go to Disney. You already Disney. made me go to Disney. Yeah, but I won't make you do another Disney. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is, I'm not precious about my birthday. Let's spend over a grand going to fucking Disneyland. Paris. I'm not precious about it. <laughs> it was a big birthday. What did I do for my birthday? You didn't want anything and I still made it. Yeah, thank exactly, because I'm a considerate, considerate person. Yeah. I was like, no, it's just another year. Don't care. But, um... Now, my favourite place would probably be Prague because I was thin yeah. when I was there and I had lots of food and the beer was cheap. Yeah, Prague was lovely, to be fair. Mm. So Prague one, was really one nice. One of my favourite photos of us is from Prague. Not not the one with the elephant in the zoo, which is pretty funny, or the child falling over oh, the zoo. Yeah. That, was pretty, <laughs> that was pretty funny. But us trying to squint at the sun. It's, it's us squinting at the sun trying to get a good photo <laughs> together. <laughs> I actually, to, yeah, to be out uh, of the places that we've gone together, I think, yeah, Prague is... <gasps> Cottages for couples. That's in fucking Skibbereen. I know it is, but I remember that was the night I put those uh, party ring biscuits over your nipples. Oh, yeah. That was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cute place. Listen, there, like, there's people listening to this. Nobody's nobody's laughing but the men because the men are just like, oh, no, I want to do it. <laughs> you know, if you know the party ring, they're essentially crystallized sugar. They're not even yeah, biscuits. They're I'm, just circles of crystalline sugar. Yeah. They're like flat donuts. You know the ones. I used to call them the Homer Simpson biscuits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. But uh, I just put them over her nipples when her top was off. And I, was, I laughed at that. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Irish 381 says for Connie what is the most interesting part of being in a relationship with a man like Ducky you know, it's, almost, it's probably stuff moments like this is it you're doing a podcast oh yeah live, a podcast live with the that, dream, yeah. that at least, like at least 10 to 20 thousand people are going to listen to yeah yeah I just wrote that in at the end of the podcast instead yeah, of start like I did the last lovely. time yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, what was it again? What's the most interesting thing? Oh, the 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 in the sheer volume of shit jokes. Yeah, it's going to get worse. <laughs> yeah, the sheer in both, in both quality and quantity. Yeah, <laughs> the sheer volume of shit jokes. <laughs> it's pity that like I'm too aware that I'm recording a podcast. I let the brain relax enough that I can start firing off a few more. Mm. You know, because they come to me like that when I'm out shopping and just in my day to day life. Like, yeah, I know what they do. I I feel like. I get puns come into my brain in the same way like a coke addict thinks of drugs when he's trying to go cold turkey you know they just keep and they're like no get back I'm, I'm trying to move on <laughs> yeah that's yeah yeah you. they're just there constantly mm. yeah. yeah but um, yeah that's the last of the questions and uh, my sister will be over shortly to get her hair done so we're going to wrap this up yeah so uh, thanks everybody for listening thanks to the, the, the lovely Connie for, for joining me thanks for having me <laughs> and uh, we'll both catch you lads and ladies well I'll catch you lads and ladies in the next one She's she says she's never coming back no never that's coming enough back. now that's enough now never again. I'll have to get a new one that's a bit Until more willing to podcast he makes me do a stream or something oh yeah yeah and get you on the stream yeah I'll be the mute person in the background yeah I'm sure look we can get a consensus here at the end for those who are uh, listening to this on YouTube because I'll post it to the main YouTube well I've noticed during this podcast you swear a lot more than me when I'm switched on yeah Just but you're, you're used to not you're used to not swearing. Yeah. I'm not. I swear like a sailor. The problem is like, because well, anytime I'm doing podcasts with like PJ or Magic Skeptic, mm. 
um, I, I make a conscious effort not to swear as much because it's it's one thing if I get my own podcast demonetized on YouTube, yeah. but if it's theirs, I'm like, oh, avoid it. So now it's starting to become more natural to swear less when I'm recording. Oh, well, it'll be demonetized <laughs> now anyway because of me. So. Oh, it will, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, once I remove all the slurs that you were saying the whole way throughout this there. I wasn't uh, saying any slurs. I'll just go, I'll put it on record. I've never actually lied in my life. So Bullshit. who are you going to believe? Bullshit. <laughs> there you go again. Ah, swearing again. <laughs> right. Anyway, thanks everybody for tuning in and we'll see you lads and ladies in the next one.